Hi, my name is John Humphreys, and this is going to be a very quick coding session for binary search. Basically, it's live coding so that you can see the thought process, mistakes, testing, stuff like that in action versus a fully pre-planned video. Um, quickly, before we get into it, I just made a little diagram of what binary search is to remind people. Uh, basically, if you have an array of elements, they have to be sorted. It helps you to find the index of an element that you're interested in very quickly, in logarithmic time, actually. Uh, it has the data set every single cycle. So let's say with this simple example where we have six elements, index 0 through 5. If you wanted to find 12, the green one, it would start off by looking at your array, taking the first and last index, so 5 plus 0. It would divide that by 2, which rounds down to find the middle element. So the first element it would check would actually end up being the second index one here, which is 13. Now 13 is higher than 12, which is our target, so then it would go repeat the process looking between 2 and 0. And it keeps doing that until it singles out the correct element, which would be index 1, value 12. And uh, if it finds it, great, it gives you the index. If it doesn't, then it goes and returns a minus 1 generally. So with that said, let's jump into uh, IDE. Uh, I already made an empty shell program here. It doesn't actually do anything. So the first thing we would need to do is, say, make an array that we want to search. So if I did, I'll do an integer array, and we'll say it has, I don't know, just a random number of elements. So 1, 2, 18, 36, 84, 112. 245 and, I don't know, 987. Now, if we want to search this array for an element, we'll say we'll target 18. Uh, we'd have to start writing code for that, right? So we'll start out by writing a wrapper function. Now, uh, generally, binary search and other ones like that can be done with recursive algorithms, an algorithm, you know, a function that calls itself, basically. So the, when you're writing those, it's usually most helpful to write a wrapper function just to check the initial inputs and uh, default some parameters. So we'll start with that. That'll be our public function. We'll say public int binary search. It's an int because it's going to have to return the index of the uh, element it found, or minus 1 if it didn't find it. So if we go in here, we'll make the first parameter our array. We'll call it A, so it's easier to reference. Um, and we'll also take the target. That would be the target element, like in our case we said 18. Going in here, um, the first thing we want to check is that the array is actually well populated. So, you know, let's see if that's the case. We'll say if A, not, uh, if A equal null, or a dot length equals zero, return minus one. We'll see it doesn't work. Otherwise, we could actually throw an exception. That might actually that might actually make more sense. But it's your true decision. Anyway, um, assuming everything's correct, we want to call a real binary search function that will do the actual work. So we'll call that binary search impl. And that will have to take the array, the target, the minimum index we're willing to search right now, and the maximum index that we're willing to search right now. Those would default to the zero and the last element of the array. So we'll go back up and we'll call that from our wrapper function. So you can see our wrapper functions being pretty useful already. It checks the nulls and zeros, and then it actually defaults the parameters for the user. So whoever calls it only needs to actually provide uh, two parameters. So we can go up here and actually call that now so it's ready later. We'll say uh, system.out.println binary search. Oh, here's the thing. 
We actually can't call this right now because I have to make these functions static or instantiate this class. I'm just going to make them static. We cannot reference a non-static function from a static function like this. Anyway, so going back, we have binary search. And we'll do error array and 18, which I said was our target. And if this ends up working when we're done, we should see that the index of 18 is 0, 1, 2. So it should be 2. So going into the implementation function, the first thing we'd want to do is see if, uh, if min index is greater than max index. Then we've gone past the point we wanted to be at, and we're not going to find an answer. So if min index greater than max index, we'll just return minus 1. And that means we did not find the element. Basically, that means we kept looking in smaller and smaller ranges of the array, and we got to the point where there was nothing to be found. The indexes crossed over. So that means we're just done. The algorithm worked, but nothing was found. So that's more of the error case, uh, the finish case. The normal working case, we'd want to actually find the middle index and see if that has the element we're searching for. And if it doesn't, then we refine the search. So we'll say int mid index equals max, well, max index plus min index. And we'll divide it by two. This is a funny way of dividing by two with this uh, triple right shift. Actually, what it does is, um, It'll add the min index and the max index together, and that integer might overflow a normal integer and go into the sign bit. But uh, the triple right shift will actually safely divide that by two. So basically, it's a integer divide by two that'll make sure it doesn't overflow. You could read about it, but you could just do a simpler one if you wanted to. Anyway, so we'll check if um, basically our array's middle index equals the target element, then we return the middle index. That's fantastic. Else if a the mid in sorry if a mid index is greater than the target, then that means the target is in the lower half of the array. So it's between min index and mid index. So in that case, we want to recurse and do another binary search. So return binary search impl. This is our recursive part. We have to do the array again, the target element again. We're going to keep the same min index, and this time we're going to go up to the mid index. And we already know that the mid index is not the correct element. You know, we just actually checked that. If it was, then this first if statement would have won. So we could actually go one less than the middle index to make it a little better. And on the other hand, so now we've checked if the middle element equaled the value we wanted, and we've checked if the value we wanted was in the lower half of the array. So the only option left is that it's in the higher half of the array now, if neither of those worked. So we say else, we return binary search impl. This is recursing again. And we do the array, the target element, the middle index plus one this time, and the max index. So with this, we'll have successfully been able to search either the center of the array, the lower half of the array, or the upper half of the array. Anyway, with that, um, this program should actually work now. So we're going to run it quick. Assuming we have no compilers or anything, it should run right through. And we should hopefully get it too. And there we go. We can see that our program output it too. So um, it's important when you write things like this to actually test a variety of values. Make sure you don't have off by one errors, things like that. For example, um, it's possible that I wasn't thinking, and you might want to actually pass in 
the length minus one here. That way we're looking at the actual index of the last element rather than one past it. Because remember, if you get length of an array of six elements, it's going to say that it's six, but the last index of that will actually be five, because zero index, so people mess up these things a lot. So anyway, testing the full range of values is pretty important. So if we just copy this line a few times, we'll copy it without the comment actually. If we test zero, we should get a minus one. If we test two, we should get a one. If we test, say, 344, we should get a minus one because it doesn't exist. If we test 345, it should work. If we test 987, it should work fine. It's the last element. And if we test, say, 999, it should fail and do a minus one. So let's see if that's the case. Nope, wrong button. Just going to rerun here. So it's running building, sorry. In a few seconds we should see our answers. So uh, in this case we have a runtime error, it appears. Um, it'll be on our last item, apparently, based on the number of output we have. So if you look at this, we can probably guess that this is a case where I had an off by one error. So uh, it'll actually be right here. This is a case where I went, I said my indexes were going between zero and array.length, and array.length is actually um, one more than the last index in the array. I should have compensated by taking one off. So now that we have this, we should build a rerun and see that everything comes out fine. So now it correctly figured out that that was one past the end of the array and that it can't be found, so it returns minus one. So. At this point, the elements that we did find were the first one, which is 18, which is index 2. The third one, which is, let's see, so the second one's 0, that's not in the array, so that's great, it's minus 1. Third one is 2, that's at index 1 in the array, which is correct. The next one is 344, that's not in the array, so it's minus 1, that's good. Next one's 345, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's index 6, 987 is index 7, and 999 is not in the array, so that's minus 1. So that's great, we have a working program here, and uh, we're finished. I hope you found that useful, and uh, tune in for more soon.